Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jacques. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. We cannot always avoid using insecticides, but to use them safely and to prevent the development of resistance, it is important to understand how they work. You know, Dong et al. recently reviewed the function of pyrethrins in insect control. Pyrethrins are biodegradable natural organic compounds produced by the flowers of chrysanthemum cinerifolium. The word chrysanthemum actually comes from the Greek meaning gold flower. Well, I, I see those are, are white. <laughs> Getting back to insecticides. <laughs> oh yes, insecticides. Um, most insecticides you use in your house are synthesized pyrethrin der derivatives. And they can be up to 10 times more potent than the actual natural version. Well, you know, although pyrethrins are generally safe, they are neurotoxins that target the neuronal sodium channels. The sodium channel is, is just a pore, and it's responsible for the initiation and propagation of action potentials along the neuronal axon. And sodium channel neurotoxins bind to their res respective receptor sites and alter various channel properties, including ion conductance, ion selectivity, and channel gating. Well, mammals such as humans and us, uh, and mice of course, uh, express nine sodium channel isoforms that are differentially expressed in various cell types, uh, tissues, and also developmental stages. Surprisingly, most insects only have one. Just one? Yeah. I mean, d does it mean that, you know, they're all their neurons are identically the same? Y yeah, that, that would be uh, tough on them, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, but they have a little trick. They use splice variants and RNA editing to achieve an impressive spectrum of differences in channel gating properties. Okay, now does that give them an advantage? You know, there must be a reason because it is very tightly controlled and uh, it, it is, is of course inherited, but um, it really isn't clear at this stage. Um, there are some interesting hints though. The splice sites are generally conserved and all of the thousands of possible exon combinations only about 30 are used. And then there are distinct differences in the exons that are used in adults and in embryos. You know, it seems very well control controlled and flexible. Uh, this could help with the rapid development of insecticide resistance. Y you know, that's, that's quite right. You can imagine the ability of a single mutation to modify all the sodium channel proteins all at once could be an advantage because that will give a rapid change. Well, you know, trade stability for f flexibility. Yeah, they, <laughs> that's, that's quite true. There are uh, more than 50 sodium channel mutations or combination of mutations associated with pyrethroid resistance. So it is clearly where the action is. You know, and the good news is that if we know where the mutations are, they can be used as early markers to identify pyrethroid resistance. That would prevent users from spraying pesticides that do not work. Exactly. Oh, well, and since the mutations stop the ability of the pyrethrins to inactivate the sodium channels, they are actually called knockdown resistance mutations, KDRs for short. And many of the KDR mutations are located close to the receptor sites mm. of these uh, pyrethroid um, sensitive uh, insect sodium channels. You could also use the mutations as markers to follow the spread of resistance. You know, Carlson et al. did exactly that. They use the sequencing to follow the transfer of an insecticide resistance mutation between the Anopheles gambiae species in Ghana. You know, that is the beauty of genomics. Once we understand how the system works, you know, that knowledge can be used to design, not only design both safer and effective insecticides, but also use them more selectively. You know, indoxicob is just a wonderful example of a new class of sodium channel targeting insecticides. In insects, indoxicarb is converted to a more toxic metabolite, whereas mammals convert indoxicarb to non-toxic metabolites. Hmm. It's cool that the same insecticide is more harmful in insects than, than mammals. You, you know, that's the way you like it. And, and it has come a long way since the discovery of the pyrethrin targets and the unusual mechanisms in insect sodium channels. You know, it is it's just exciting to imagine how this field will change in the next couple of years. But unfortunately, we're out of time today. Well, thank you for tuning into our show. Please feel free to reach out to us with questions, thoughts, suggestions, concerns, or any feedback. We love hearing from you. Take care and have a great day. Bye. Bye.